Hello, this is Dr. Katherine Kirby, and I have felt led to do a video on depression. Depression in men, depression in women. I think women are more apt to go to the doctor for help. Therefore, I think they think depression is more common in women. Uh, but depression across the board, kids can be depressed, animals can be depressed. It's a big lie that depression is clinical, that, hey, life is good, I have everything, I just have a clinical depression. No, that is a big lie that was put out really by a profession that was dying out because people didn't want to go to a quack, because insurance companies wouldn't pay for a visit. And people didn't want to think they were crazy, especially, I think men have that stigma where I'm not going to talk to a shrink. And um, so it got insurance to pay for the visits because, hey, it's a clinical depression. This whole thing about serotonin, your serotonin's low. If you read the printout from a antidepressant, it will tell you that serotonin is theoretical it is it cannot be measured now if something were real don't you think it could that it could be measured anyway i'm here today to talk to you about depression so in medical school i was taught siggy caps it's an acronym to help the medical student remember the symptoms of depression so there is uh, trouble with sleep, that's S, you need more sleep, you need less sleep. And then um, tr you don't wanna be around people, you don't have the ease for energy, you don't have the energy for people, you're not motivated, you don't wanna do the things you normally like to do. You may have feelings about guilt, right? You could feel sad, but in men that can be more irritability right um people can will notice you're not yourself is something you know is something wrong um you're eating you can be eating more or less you're gaining weight or you just aren't interested in food at all and it begins to impact your daily life and i don't know why two weeks but they say well you have to have these symptoms for at least two weeks because people may say, oh, I've been so depressed or I'm depressed today. No, that's not depression when you're, when you're depressed today. I did read a book one time that looked at depression as something therapeutic, like, um, it, it, it really spun me around because I've never thought of depression in a good way, but that you withdraw from the world for a time until you get yourself back on track. You're, you can sleep more. You can lay in bed all day if you want. You can wallow in misery if you want. But you get tired of doing that. That gets old. One day you say, what am I doing? I'm laying in bed. The world's passing me by. I want to get back out there to life. I want to hear the birds sing. So yeah, I never thought about that before. Um, I remember hearing a story one time about a woman that said when her mother died, she went to bed. Well, she went to bed for two years. That is pretty dramatic, you know. So what do you do when you're depressed? Uh, first of all, don't think it's not about anything. There are reasons why we get depressed. Depression can be caused by junk food, sodas. Um, I've seen it. I've seen people turn around when they get off that stuff, especially sodas, and uh, it can cause anxiety. Something in your past that you haven't dealt with, emotions that you haven't dealt with. I, Heard somebody say one time, well, I thought I moved away from all my family. Well, your heart's in here. You can move away from situations, but you still have the emotions there. Uh, troubled childhoods, you know, marriage problems, problems with adult children. Uh, what if you have grandchildren you never see or children you never see? I mean, and then your relationship with God. We are created to know our creator. 
and when we shut him out, there's a void that you don't really know who you are until you know him because he reveals to you who you are in him. Um, years ago, I, I had a patient that would come in and talk to me about depression. And as soon as I brought up the, the God thing, that's it. He never wants to talk to me about depression again. But as a physician, you're supposed to treat the body, mind, and spirit, right? We're three. We're not just one. I mean, come on. Usually people get sick because there's something going on in their life. That's why their immune system goes down. You don't just get a cold. Why did you get a cold? So back to depression, what do you do about it? Do you go on antidepressants? Do you talk to a friend? Well, maybe you don't have any friends or you don't have any trustworthy friends or maybe you and your husband don't get along or maybe you've been betrayed by a friend. Journaling, journaling is great. I think I can't say enough about journaling because your heart comes out in journaling. You're, you know, recently I told a neighbor that, well, she was writing down, I got up at 8.30, I ate breakfast. No, <laughs> a journal is not a list of what you do. It's about who you are. And when I told her that, she said, well, what am I supposed to journal about? And I said, well, assign yourself a question, like how do I feel about my life? Or where do I think my life is going? Who are the closest people in my life? Why do I think I don't have more friends? Um, how do I feel about my job and coworkers? Am I happy with who I am? What am I disappointed about in my life? You know, why have I stayed stuck in a job I don't like or whatever? Why have I stayed stuck? Why haven't I been more proactive? Ask yourself a question and just write for 10 or 15 minutes. And during the day, there's a lot of distractions. Even for me, I have two dogs sitting here. You know, you can hear the dryer go off, the telephone, whatever. First thing in the morning before you're really involved in the world is a really good time. Or at night, when you're just before you go to sleep, but sometimes that can get you stirred up and just write, just get it out. You'll be amazed at what comes out. Now, what about antidepressants? Yes, they have side effects. I kind of got into a little argument with a friend of mine who's a psychiatrist and I said, hey, sometimes people can't tolerate the side effects. And he said, well, they have to. They have no, sometimes people can't tolerate the side effects. There was a young man in college who killed himself because he felt like he was going to jump out of his skin and his doctor told him to keep taking the medicine. Different antidepressants are different. There are some that are very hard to get off of. Um, but it's like I was saying to the psychiatrist, if you have severe side effects, and you can't work, you, you can't take that medicine. Some people do wonderful. There is a big placebo effect, meaning the fact that you know you are taking something makes you feel better. Some people gain quite a bit of weight and then that makes them feel worse and then they become pre-diabetic. So, you have to figure out what is best for you. Hopefully you have a good relationship with your doctor. Your doctor's gotten to know you. Sometimes counseling is a better way to go, but you have to have, you have to have a good relationship with that counselor. If you don't hit it off, it's not going to work. Then you find, you try somebody else. Now we had a counselor in our town that had evening hours and he was wildly successful because most people can't take off work to go to a counseling appointment. Um, making amends with people you've had problems with, writing letters. Um, when I was training to be a foster parent, one of the videos I watched was about healing from past hurts. And they had a circle and you could start out very hurt, injured child, whatever, 
and go down into a cascade of depression, anxiety, overeating, uh, all that, bitterness, depression, passive aggressiveness, um, treating yourself horribly, um, self-hate, but the better way was to go full circle through what they called the trail of tears. And to do that, you had to admit, first of all, who it was that hurt you. Well, you might say, I don't know. I, I just thought I was clinically depressed. I didn't think, I didn't think I had any problem or I don't want it. I don't want somebody delving into my past. Well, you know, it's work. It's, it's work and tears and you know if you want to heal it's worth it it's worth it um so you have to make a decision that you're going to do the work and they would they would put these kids through a lot of work uh and you go well, i don't i don't want to forgive whoever i don't i don't i shouldn't have to forgive them what they did was unforgivable. Well, that is not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is to me like handing a bad kid in school over to the principal. It's giving that case over to a higher authority, over to God and saying, God, I, I don't want this on my heart anymore. I can't handle it. I'm giving it to you. I'm forgiving them. I'm giving it on to you. It doesn't mean that you're agreeing with what they did to you or to No, It's not. It's not. Don't think that. Um, so being your own best friend, because when you're depressed, you actually can think that this world is a better place without you. And right now there's kind of like a barrage of uh, videos and films glorifying suicide. It's horrifying, glorifying um, ending your life. No, that is not what God wants, no. God has a plan for you and it's a great plan. And Satan likes nothing better when you spiral down into staying in bed and overeating or undereating and treating your body badly and being convinced that you're not worthwhile you that this earth is better off without you that's not what he wants for you he loves you he loves you so much he paid a price for you and he wants you to come to him with all your hurts He's Papa God. I just taught my grandchildren recently that, you know, in the Bible, it tells us well, we can call God Papa. We can call him Daddy. We can go to him. He promises even to be our dad, our mom, our brother, our sister. He promises to be everything to us. Oh, my dog's laying his head in my lap and he never does that. And I was telling my teenage grandson this and he said yeah my little brother prayed the other night he said i want to pray and he said papa god will you please bless our food and god does love you he does care he knows your heart he will reveal yourself to you in the meantime get a doctor's appointment get a counselor's appointment if you don't have a good friend use that journal you know talk to god if you need medicine, talk to your doctor. Uh, get rid of junk food and soda and sugar. It's very bad for the body. It brings you down and uh, it makes you sick, really. When you get off sugar or caffeine and then you have a little bit, you see what it does to your body. But I really wanted to convince you that depression is not clinical. Don't believe it, it's a lie. There's a reason. Um, I have a few videos out on repressed sexual memories, and I'm not trying to convince any of you that you have that. But I used to just have crying jags, and especially when my husband would go away. But other times, 
I'd be digging in the garden. It's a sunny day. The birds are singing. And all of a sudden, I'm weeping. And I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why I would write dark poems. I didn't know why until I found out why. And now that doesn't have any doesn't have any power on me anymore. I've, I've healed through that. I've walked through the trail of tears and God has brought me out into a place of sunshine and his light. And he doesn't want you to be down and depressed, but you do have an enemy that wants you down and depressed. Believe me, he does. So today, make a decision to do something and you know what, when you're depressed, doing one thing tomorrow can seem like a mountain. Just one thing, you just can't even think you can do it. Uh, drink one less soda, buy a notebook to journal, call a counselor, schedule a doctor's appointment, um, make yourself start a new task. Just one thing, I'm just urging you just one thing tomorrow and then stick to it and i'll be back i want to help you in this journey i do i got through you know people are surprised i raised four kids doing a lot of it on my own went to nursing school we never had enough money but god always got us through it taught me more, believe me, than having excess money. Then God wanted me to go to medical school. And then people viewed me as a rich person that really didn't understand or wouldn't understand because, you know, there's so much prejudice against people that are doing well financially. But I want to see you through on this journey. I want to help you. I want to be a encouraging word to get you through and to make you see how much God loves you and how valuable you are to him. Uh, read the Bible, open to the book of John and read it like a child. Pray, God, show me, show me what you have in here for me. And God will answer that. If you are sincere, God will answer your needs. He is always there just waiting for you to call on him. And believe me, he will, he makes all the difference. And so don't think you feel unloved. There's no sin. There's no nothing that separates you from the love of God. Read Romans chapter eight. There is nothing, not one single thing that separates you from the love of God. I want to tell you a quick story. Years ago, when I was a nurse's aide, there was an elderly lady named Elva. Elva was very nervous, very jittery, very, she'd walk and she's just nervous. And I don't think I realized how bad it was until I took her out in public to a funeral and saw her in the light of day and through the lens of other people. She was very pale because she never went outside and she was very frail. And she would sit in her room alone. She never made friends. She would go down to meals, but she kept to herself. She never made a single friend at the nursing home. And she had been there for years. And I would try to talk to her. I would go and sit with her and I would talk to her about the love of God. But you see, she wasn't worthy, she told me. No, God did not die for her. And so I read her chart and there was sexual abuse in her childhood. And all through her adult life, she suffered from that. She suffered from anxiety and panic and mental breakdowns. And, and she had a great job, but she would go from job to job. And she obviously didn't have support because when her family came to see her, they were always critical of her clothing, of just everything. And the poor woman, she felt like a criminal because of what had happened to her. Beloved people, God loves you. He loves you so much. You can't fathom 
Read Psalm 139. He thinks about you all day long. His thoughts of you are so numerous you can't count them. He wants to raise, lift his arms down and raise you out of this depression. And I want to help you too. And I will be back again to talk to you. Love. Take care.